Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay, and Palm Olive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave, bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, when you're living and working away from home, a good friend and confidant comes in mighty handy. Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is fortunate in having just such a friend and her landlady. Last Friday at breakfast, Miss Brooks confided in Mrs. Davis about her Thursday date. I was out with Mr. Boynton last night, Mrs. Davis. Oh, you don't have to tell me that, Connie. I could tell when I went in to wake you up this morning. How? You were squeezing your pillow so hard, half the feathers popped out. Oh. No wonder I dreamt that I was captured by Indians. We had quite an exciting time, though, before Mr. Boynton took me home. What did you do? Well, he said he'd like to go to a movie... So I very subtly steered him to the Strand, where they're showing Valentino. Oh, is that the one about Rudolph Valentino, the great lover? It isn't about Jake LaMotta. (laughs) It's really a very good movie, and I was hoping Mr. Boynton would take a slight hint and get into the mood. Did the scheme work, Connie? Did it work? Why, halfway through the most torrid love scene, two ushers had to ask Mr. Boynton to leave. Oh, Oh, really, Connie? What did he do? He giggled so hard, he dropped his popcorn. (laughs) Well, don't worry, Connie. You may find romance sooner than you think. That is, if you take advantage of the article I read in this morning's paper... What article? It says that Mr. Jacques Bouvet of the French public school system is here in America to import teachers to France. He arrived at Madison yesterday, and he's interested in any American instructors who can help streamline French educational methods. Well, good for him. But why an American teacher should go traipsing off to France to teach is beyond me. But Mr. Bouvet says that as an incentive... The salary would be just double your present one. Well, don't stand there. Pack my bag. (laughs) Double my salary? And I presume they'd pay all traveling expenses. Definitely. Well, then all I have to do is to sell myself to Monsieur Bouvet. Where is he staying while he's in town, Mrs. Davis? At the Empire Hotel. Hmm, does the article say how long a teacher would be expected to stay in France? At least one year, Connie. Oh, then I'd better forget about it. It isn't just Mr. Boynton I'd miss. I'd be lonesome for you, Mrs. Davis, and Harriet and Walter Denton and all the swell kids at school. I know, Connie. Then there's your principal, Mr. Conklin. Well, don't stand there. Pack my bag. (laughs) Look, Connie, even though we'd all miss you, too, I'd like to remind you of the old saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder. If you do go away for a year, think of what your reunion will be like. Yes, I can picture it now. I trip lightly down the gangplank, and there on the dock stands Mr. Boynton. As our eyes meet, the scene is charged with romance. And when he speaks, it takes a long moment before his passionate words penetrate my consciousness. What passionate words, Connie? Long time no see, Miss Brooks. (laughs) What have you done to your car, Walter? It looks different this morning. Prettier. That's because you're in it, lovely one. (laughs) I purposely picked you up early this morning so you could take advantage of the bulletin I have for you. Bulletin? Yes, ma'am. I read an article in the paper that says a high official in the French public school system is in town looking for teachers. A Mr. Jacques Bouvet's. That's Jacques Bouvet, Walter. How do you know him, Miss Brooks? Mrs. Davis introduced me to the article this morning. Oh, aren't you excited? He's offering teachers an all-expense trip to gay Paris. That's short for France. (laughs) (laughs) I know he is. That's why I've got to get to Mr. Conklin's office. Why Mr. Conklin's office? So I can get permission to take a little time off this morning. I'd like to see Mr. Bouvet before he's mobbed by the other teachers. But, Miss Brooks, you know how old Marblehead (laughs) Mr. Conklin is when it comes to giving people time off. Well, I'll just have to think of some legitimate-sounding alibi, I guess. 
Now, let's see. What sounds like a truthful tissue of lies? You should never have brought this paper to my office, Harriet. The article about that Frenchman, Bouvet, raiding our schools for teachers has upset me terribly. But why, Daddy? Because I know school teachers, that's why. His offer of traveling expenses and more money will have them flocking to his wallet like moths to a flame. They'll follow him to France like those dim-witted children who followed the Pied Piper of Hamelin. But, Daddy, Monsieur Bouvet is not only looking for teachers. It says in the last paragraph that he's also offering high school principals double salary and all traveling expenses. Ah, Paris in the spring. <laughs> the Champs-Élysées. Virgining blossoms in the Bois de Boulogne. Um, hand me that paper, please. Here you are. Uh, it says Monsieur Jacques Bouvet, who is staying at the Empire Hotel. And it's been... Uh, been uh, for a minute. Further details in later edition. Uh, run down to the newsstand and fetch me the latest one, Harriet. But, Daddy, you wouldn't let anything tempt you into leaving Madison, would you? Calm yourself, my dear. I have no thought of succumbing to the siren song of filthy lucre. Moreover, I intend to see to it that there is no exodus from my staff. If I catch any member of Madison's faculty making a beeline for the Empire Hotel, I'll see that... Come in. Now, you run along, fetch that paper, Harriet. All right, Daddy. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hi, Harriet. Bye, Miss Brooks. B Bye, Harriet. <laughs> and what brings you to my office so early, Miss Brooks? An emergency, Mr. Conklin. I've got to make a beeline for the Empire Hotel. Oh, you do. <laughs> and uh, do you mind telling me why before you buzz off? Well, I've just got to get over there, sir. You see, I... Uh, uh, let me help you. <laughs> Perhaps someone close to you, some relative of whom you're exceedingly fond, lies ill in the Empire Hotel. Ill? Ill? Why, yes, sir, that's exactly it. You took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, well, don't worry about that. I'll shove them back in in a minute. <laughs> that is, just which one of your relatives is it? It's my grandmother, Mr. Conklin. She's terribly ill. Poor dear soul. <laughs> Perhaps she'd feel better if you informed her of a rather startling fact. Namely, the Empire Hotel is a recently erected annex of the Empire Athletic Club, and it's strictly for men. So is Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> She's very popular. You see, sir, she works at the Empire Hotel. She's a, uh, she's a telephone operator there. And yesterday she had a terrible accident. An accident? Yes, sir. It seems one of the other girls didn't show up, and Granny had to stay at the switchboard all during her lunch hour. Well, finally, the manager brought her a plate of spaghetti. Uh, a spaghetti, Miss Brooks? Well, sir, between her being so hungry and the switchboard being so busy, Granny got all excited and ate up three long-distance calls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a catastrophe. But, Miss Brooks, I have a suggestion to make. Supposing I accompany you to the Empire Hotel. It'll be a nice surprise for your grandmother. Oh, but, Mr. Conklin, I'll I... just burst into her room and say, Grandma, what a big mustache you have. What? And, Grandma, what a big fat bankroll to be offering double salaries to teachers to lure them out of the country. And, Granny, dear, why on earth are you registered here as Jacques Bouvet? <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, is the jig up or isn't the jig up? Charleston, Charleston. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What it cleans your teeth. Colgate toothpaste. Cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What it cleans your teeth. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath. While it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Yes, the Colgate way is the most thoroughly proved and accepted home method of oral hygiene known today. Over two years' research showed brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate dental cream helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. The Colgate way stops tooth decay best. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, offers such conclusive proof. 
And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate's. Colgate Dental Cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. <laughs> Well, I didn't dare leave school during the morning session, but at lunchtime, I joined Mr. Boynton in the cafeteria and told him all about Monsieur Bouvet. When he heard that I was contemplating a trip abroad, Mr. Boynton was grief-stricken, and with ill-concealed panic, he finally managed to say, A year in France would do you a world of good. (laughs) Yes, I guess it would. But, Mr. Boynton, a, a year is a long time. I sort of expected you to say you'd miss me. Oh, that goes without saying. I I often think of how much we've meant to each other, and well, you might not believe this, Miss Brooks, but in the four or five years we've known each other... Four years, seven months, three weeks, and two days. (laughs) Well, yes. Well, in all that time, I've never once... That is, well, I... Yes, Mr. Boynton, you never once what? You're the only girl I've ever taken to the zoo. (laughs) You've no idea what a feeling of security that gives me It may not seem like a very romantic locale But many's the time as we stood outside those cages I got some pretty bold thoughts You wished you were inside? (laughs) Oh, we have had some good times, Mr. Boynton And if I do go abroad, I'll miss you more than just a little That goes both ways. But there's a silver lining in every cloud, you know. Remember, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And when you returned, I'd be the first one to meet you at the boat. Yes, ma'am, I'd be right there on that dock as you tripped down the gangplank. And what would you say, Mr. Boynton? Say? Well, I I don't know offhand, but it wouldn't be anything teary or sentimental. I'd probably just take your hand and get off some witty remark or other. Like what? Well, like... Long time no see. (laughs) Oh, that is a wham doodle of a crack. (laughs) But perhaps we'd better drop the subject, Mr. Boynton. After all, my going to France is purely conjectural. Monsieur Bouvet may not even pay any attention to the message I left for him. Message? Yes, since women are barred from the Empire Hotel, I phoned and left my name and address at the desk. Mr. Bouvet was out, so I just left word that if he wanted a good English teacher for overseas duty, he could interview me at my place this evening. Well, everything happens for the best, I suppose. Still, this Bouvet has a lot of nerve to expect American teachers to go traipsing off to France to teach. He's offering all travel expenses and double salary. I wonder if he'd be interested in a biology teacher. (laughs) You know, it might be quite a rewarding experience at that to teach abroad for a while. Pardon me, Mr. Boynton, but I've got an important message for Miss Brooks. Well, go, go right ahead, Walter. Harriet just took a call for you in the principal's office, Miss Brooks. Oh, who was it? Uh, Mrs. Davis. She called to say that Monsieur Bouvet phoned, and he said he'd be over at your house at 8 o'clock tonight. Oh, that's wonderful, Walter. Wait. In the late edition of the paper, it says that he's only accepting teachers who have a first-hand knowledge of France and its people and who speak the language fluently. Fluently? But I haven't spoken any French since high school. And I majored in Spanish at college. I've forgotten most of the French I ever learned also. I guess we're in the same boat, Miss Brooks. Well, start paddling, Mr. Boynton. We're up the same creek, too. (laughs) Well, it's almost 8 o'clock, Mrs. Davis. Monsieur Bouvet should be here any minute. But, Connie, you said yourself you don't know enough about French to read a perfume bottle. How do you expect to land a job teaching over there? If I get the job, Mrs. Davis, I'll have time to take a refresher course before I commence teaching. Now, don't worry about me. I'll, I'll get by this interview somehow. If it's what you want, Connie, I can only wish you luck. I'll go make some tea now. If you need me for anything, just call. All right, Mrs. Davis. Uh-oh, that's him. Coming! Uh, bonsoir. I am Jacques Bouvet. Oh, yes. I mean, we. Oui. <laughs> Entrez, monsieur. Uh, merci, merci. 
You, I presume, are la belle books. I'm not anybody else, la butt. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take your coat and beanie, a beret. <laughs> I'll hang them right here, Monsieur Bouvet. Now, if you'll follow me into the living room. Now, shall we sit over here on the sofa? Uh, bon. Now, uh, tell me, if you will, something about your background. You are acquainted with Paris? Paris? I always think of it as my second home. Oh, you've been there. I've never really left there, mentally. <laughs> oh, the boulevards, the cafes. If you are so much of a Parisian at heart, I would wager that most of all you miss the Bois de Boulogne. I cry when I think of it. <laughs> that woman made me the best hats I ever owned. <laughs> hats? But the uh, Bois de Boulogne is a city park. Well, that's what I like about Paris. A park can have the same name as a milliner. Get you something, Monsieur Bouvet. Tea will be ready very soon, or, or would you rather have coffee? Oh, nothing, no thanks. I just like to get how you say uh, acquainted. But why should I struggle so with the English? You have the French, no? I have a little, yes. Ah, bon. <laughs> uh, Dites-moi alors, cette photographie là, sur la table, c'est votre père? Oh, oui, oui. Et, et l'autre photographie, c'est votre mari? Oui, oui. Oh, je suis très content. Oui, oui. Pardonnez-moi. Kind of. <laughs> uh, the tea is ready. What? Oh, uh, Mrs. Davis, this is Monsieur Bouvet. Oh, merci, uh. Monsieur. I'll put the tea sur la table. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse moi, I'd like to speak with Miss Brooks privately for one moment. Come here, Connie. All right, Mrs. Davis. Excusez-moi, too, Monsieur Bouvet. Certainement. What is it, Mrs. Davis? It's evident that I remember more of my high school French than you do. You made a terrible mistake. What did I do? When Mr. Bouvet pointed to that picture of Mr. Conklin, he asked you if he was your father, and you said yes. Oh, no. Then when he pointed to Mr. Boynton's picture and asked if he was your husband, you said yes again. <laughs> Mr. Boynton? My husband? <laughs> what am I laughing at? <laughs> happened to either of us. You've got to go back and tell Mr. Bouvet the truth. What, and let him, let him know I don't understand French? I'm sorry, Mrs. Davis, but I've got to bluff this thing through until I land that job. As you wish, Connie, but I'm going into my room and lie down. This operation is too nerve-wracking for me. I'll let you know how I come out, Mrs. Davis. Oh, you're looking at my photographs, monsieur. Oui, madame, but uh, perhaps I should talk the English. It will help me in my interviews with other Americans, n'est-ce pas? Oh, pa, pa. <laughs> <laughs> your husband is very charming, but one thing I do not understand. Why you call yourself Miss Brooks when he signs his picture, Monsieur Boynton? Well, here in America, we girls who teach school are allowed to use our maiden names. Ah. But I do hope you'll have the opportunity to meet Mr. Boynton. He's a charming person. And so devoted, so thoughtful, and so affectionate. So come in. <laughs> it's not locked. Entree. Good evening, Miss Brooks. Mr. Boynton. I hope you don't mind my... Oh, you have company. Uh, Monsieur Boynton, allow me to congratulate you. You have a very charming wife. I have where? Oh! <laughs> A scream. <laughs> what a sense of humor, darling. Your husband is funny. Funniest thing since murders in the Rue Morgue. <laughs> Give me your hat, dear. I'll explain later, Mr. Boynton. Just smile. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you are a man after my own heart, Mr. Boynton. Devil may care. And your wife has told me how affectionate you are. Uh, affectionate? Well, don't just stand there. Kiss me, you fool. <laughs> please, Miss Brooks, please. Listen to him beg. <laughs> well, I'm all puckered, dearest. 
Let's have it. Oh, a romantic. But permit me to make the introduction. I am Monsieur Jacques Bouvet. Monsieur Bouvet, but of course. Je suis très joyeuse. Bonsoir, mon ami. <laughs> How do you like that? I pucker and he kisses him. <laughs> Monsieur Bouvet, I've always wanted to teach biology in Gay Perry. You alone can make my fondest dream come true. Well, uh, uh, frankly, I have several biology te teachers already contracted. Somehow, Paris seems to uh, lend itself to biology. <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> but of course, if I accept your wife, it would be a shame to separate you, especially if you are uh, really so madly in love with her. In love with her? Rather <laughs> <laughs> would I lose my life and my wife. Comment? <laughs> Miss Brooks. We. Oui? Fuck her up again, mon chéri. Why, Pierre Boynton. <laughs> Here I am. Oh, wait. There will be time for that later. <laughs> Marshall plan or no Marshall plan? This guy has got to go. <laughs> what is it you want to tell us, monsieur? Well, uh, I have come to the conclusion that married couples are best for my purpose. Single teachers might get lonesome after a short while, and then, poof, back to America they come, leaving me clutching a valise. Clutching a valise? Holding the bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, Monsieur Bouvet, you won't have to worry about that with us. We'll stay the full time. Oh, but of course, it is only fair to tell you I have interviewed other couples, some married 10, 11 years, and with big families. The priority will go, of course, to those who are married the longest time. Oh, we've been married a very long time. How long? Uh, real long. Real, real long. The door was open, so I just... Oh, I didn't know you had guests, Miss Brooks. Oh, that's all right, Walter. Yes, come on in, Walter. Monsieur Bouvet, I'd like to present our youngest son, Walter. <laughs> what? Isn't he a doll? Now go out into the kitchen and feed your fat little face. <laughs> You heard your mother, son. We're discussing business with Monsieur Bouvet. Oh, you're Monsieur Bouvet. Oh, uh, oui, oui. Oh, bonsoir, Monsieur. <laughs> Comment allez-vous, say soir? Translation. Goodbye, Mr. Bouvet. I've got to feed my fat little face. You are quite a family. You ain't seen nothing yet. Just stop by to... Oh, oh, you have company, Miss Brooks. The more the merrier. Do come in. I recognize you from your photograph, monsieur. You are papa. <laughs> papa? And you have a lovely daughter, monsieur. Such a sweet face. Just gaze upon her. Gaze upon her? My daughter's at home. But of course she's at home. I have been talking with her for the last ten minutes. Uh, sir, either you have an extremely loud voice, <laughs> or you're as wacky as a dodo bird. Kiss <laughs> kiss a dodo bird. Oh, it's, it's just a colloquialism, sir. Dad here is a great little kidder. <laughs> Want some tea, Daddy dear? <laughs> Daddy dear? I'll get it for you if you want me to, Grandpa. <laughs> What's going on here? I was just going to escort Monsieur Bouvet to the door. Monsieur Bouvet? Oh, I should have known. Bonsoir, mon ami. Je suis très joyeuse. Well, there's no use talking. I've got to get myself a tuxedo. <laughs> Monsieur Bouvet, I'll come right to the point. At first, I refuse to be tempted, but as one of the nation's more efficient high school principals, I feel I owe it to your country to volunteer my services until your educational system is once again flourishing. 
That is a most kind, monsieur. Of course, I'll be frank with you, sir. I'm also interested in the fact that you're offering double salary. Oh, oh that? Oh, I'm afraid, monsieur, the American press has made a slight, uh, how do you say, uh, misquoting. What did they misquoting? Well, you see, we are offering double your present salary, but it is not in dollars. It is in francs. In francs? Well, that's much less than we're receiving now. Oh, we uh, think of the experience. Now... If you will all want to sign up, I will get the paper. Uh, just complete... a moment, Monsieur Bouvet. I'd like to hold a little caucus with Papa and Pierre and Sonny. Gather <laughs> around, friends. What will we tell them, Miss Brooks? Well, I think we ought to say something like this. Yes, that, that sounds just right to me. And between us, we ought to know enough French to give him the whole thing in his native tongue. Let's see. The first word is fiché. And the next is le. Then comes camp. Fine. Monsieur Bouvet. Uh, oui? Fiché le camp. Comment? Translation... Hit, Hit the, the road! road. <laughs> Eve Arden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment. Now, the case of the close scrape featuring Charles Nielsen, department store buyer. Here's what Mr. Nielsen told us. Listen. Here's exactly what happened. Shaving was just one close scrape after another for me... And then I discovered palm olive lather shave cream and a new different way to shave. Palm olive's oceans of rich, thick lather ended my worries about scrapes, burns, and nicks. Why, even in cold or hard water, that palm olive lather way is super smooth, super comfortable. Take Charles Nielsen's advice, men. The new palm olive lather way gets beards really soft, and it provides a protective film that actually floats your razor's cutting edge. You get a clean, close shave every time without worry about scraping or nicking, even in cold or hard water. Charles Nielsen and 1,200 other men tested palm olive lather cream following package directions, and three out of four reported smoother, more comfortable shaves the palm olive shave cream way, no matter how they shaved before. Better get palm olive lather shave cream. Remember, even in cold or hard water, the palm olive lather way means smoother, more comfortable shaves. Now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, after Monsieur Bouvet left, Mr. Conklin and Walter said goodnight, and that left just Mr. Boynton and me. Well, I guess we won't be going to Paris this year, but maybe we'll get another chance. You know, Miss Brooks, I've often dreamt of being in Gay Paris with you. You have, Mr. Boynton? Oh, yes, indeed. And if we were there, I'd take you to the most romantic spot on the continent, La Maison des Animals. What is that, Mr. Boynton? That's one of the biggest zoos in the world. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, take a letter. Dear Lafayette, not only are we not there, but we ain't coming. This is Burns Smith reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show, brought to you by Tom Honest Shave Cream for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave, and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis and Joe Quillen, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Listen to this. With Marvellous Bell, V-E-L, you can save 90% of dishwashing work. A quick soak in Vell suds gets dishes and glassware shiny clean. Even if a bit of food should cling, a touch with a dishcloth gets rid of it fast. Yes, Bell's activated suds lift off and carry away food and grease. So all dishes need is a quick rinse, and they dry sparkling without washing or wiping. All pots and pans need is a soaking with Vell suds. Then you can wash them shiny clean without hard scouring. What's more, Vell is a miracle of mildness. So get new Vell. Save 90% of dishwashing work. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles as chills, be sure to listen to Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>